How's it going everybody? Too spooky here. Because it's October, the spookiest month of the year, I figured I'd bring you guys something a bit spookier for once. And with that today, we're going to be counting down 5 facts about Jason Voorhees from Friday the 13th. This video has been suggested by 5 of you guys, and I just wanted to thank you guys for the suggestion because this video would not be happening without you. So without further ado, grab your hockey mask and let's just jump right into it. Number 1 Many people already know that Jason was never supposed to be the icon of the Friday the 13th franchise, and instead, it was supposed to focus on Pamela Voorhees or other superstitions surrounding the date Friday the 13th. For instance, they even had a Friday the 13th TV show that was completely absent of Jason altogether, and instead focused on a haunted antique store. Yeah. Anyway, to further show Jason was never meant to become a horror icon, Jason was supposed to remain dead in the first movie and any sequels to come. And the famous scene where Jason emerges from the lake in the first movie was just supposed to take place in a nightmare. Which it did of course, but Jason was never meant to actually make a second appearance or be alive at any point after that. Number 2 on top of the fact that Jason wasn't intended to be a horror icon, they had a couple issues along the way crafting Jason into the icon he is now. For instance, in the first draft of the script for Friday the 13th, Jason wasn't even named Jason. Instead, his name was Josh. Personally, I'm happy that they went with Jason because Josh Voorhees just doesn't have the same ring to it. And as a little side note, Friday the 13th was originally going to be called A Long Night at Camp Blood. So if you ask me, they made two good name changes for the final product. If you've seen the movies, you'll also know that Jason didn't even have his trademark hockey mask until the third movie. Before that, in the second film, he was wearing some sort of sack over his head. It was fucking terrifying! Before it was decided that Jason would be donning a hockey mask over his deformed face, Jason was originally going to wear an umpire's mask instead. Which, in a way, I think would have been kinda cool, because we'd get a look at his grisly deformities through the holes in the mask. But due to the issues with makeup and prosthetics being applied under the mask, it was decided that a hockey mask that covers his entire face would be better suited for him, to which an icon was officially born. Out of all the popular horror movie slashers, Jason has the highest body count by far. At least that we know of and from what we've seen. Although the exact number is hard to pinpoint, it's estimated to be upwards of more than 160 kills. Jason is also most known for killing his victims with his iconic machete. But we also know that Jason has killed people in many, many Fisher. other interesting ways. But did you know in the movie Jason Lives, Jason was originally going to kill people with guns. You heard that right, a horror movie slasher was going to be using guns. There was a scene that was cut involving Jason killing some deer hunters and stealing their weapons for a later scene, which included Jason decked out in ammunition with an Uzi. Probably best that scene was cut. Number 4 Due to multiple actors playing Jason in different movies, Jason has also slowly increased in height over time. Now you'll have to excuse my terrible pronunciation here, but the shortest Jason was Warrington Gillette at 6 feet 1 inch tall, and the tallest Jason was Ken Kierzinger, who was 6 feet 7 inches tall. Also as a small bonus fact, in the movie Jason X, Jason's eyes never blink while he's on the screen. Not even once. And the moment that you've all been waiting for, but not for very long, number 5. 
The popular crossover, Freddy vs. Jason, was originally supposed to be a bit different than it ended up being. For example, there was going to be a little more depth with why the two horror icons were fighting in the first place by giving them a bit of a past together. Originally, there was going to be a flashback where Freddy was going to have been a counselor at the camp, and because we all know how Freddy likes to act around children, Freddy would have ended up molesting Jason as a child. This, of course, would have made the movie a lot darker, but also given Jason a little bit more character development that he desperately needs, and it would have given the two a reason to be up against each other from the start. But of course, this was removed in future versions of the script. Another change that could have happened involved the ending of the movie. You see, the ending was originally going to involve Pinhead from Hellraiser appearing, ripping Freddy and Jason's bodies apart, and sending them to hell while saying, What seems to be the problem, gentlemen? Now this would have been pretty cool, but the studio couldn't get the rights to Pinhead's character or reach any agreement for his rights, so the ending was ultimately changed. Also, the success of Freddy vs. Jason almost led to a second crossover movie between Freddy and Jason, but this time around they would also be up against Ash from the Evil Dead franchise. Although unfortunately, just like Pinhead, the studios couldn't reach any agreements for character rights, so the idea had to be retired. However, if you do still want to see this crossover, you're in luck. Because although it did not become a movie, it did end up getting adapted into a short comic series, so you should definitely go give that a read. But to give it a quick introduction, it centers around Jason using the Necronomicon to resurrect himself as a normal child that isn't deformed. Which, in a way, could suggest that Jason is actually a deadite, but that's up for debate. But there you have it everybody, 5 facts about Jason Voorhees. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video today and hopefully you learned something new. If you did, make sure to leave a like. And while you're at it, why don't you comment down below what you guys would like to learn about next. And then make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you can be notified the second a new video comes out. Also make sure to like and follow Too Spooky on his social media to keep up to date with the channel. Those links can be found in the description. Hey, thanks Carl, I appreciate that. You're welcome. <sighs> I'm just glad this video is over. Jason always scared me as a kid, and I've been afraid of every Friday the 13th ever since. You know, come to think of it, it's too bad there wasn't a Friday the 13th this year. It would have been pretty cool to put this video out on a Friday the 13th. Oh well. <sighs> Too spooky. You know there was a Friday the 13th like last week, right? Uh, there's no way. Well, fuck. How did I miss that? You really need to stop being so lazy, Too Spooky. You could have had this video out last week on Friday the 13th during the spookiest month of the year. I'm disappointed in you. <sighs> I'm disappointed in me too. Uh. I suck eggs. Yeah, Too Spooky, you really do. Anyway, I'm gonna go get some rest. I got me a big date tomorrow night. Oh, do you now? With who? I'm not telling you, assholes. You'll just find some way to ruin it. In fact, I've said too much already. <sighs> Good night. Ouch. Yo, Spooky, didn't Carl say he was afraid of Jason like a minute ago? Yeah, why? <laughs> <laughs> no reason. anything about his date tomorrow when he wakes up? Oh. That's what you get for calling me an asshole, you ginger prick.